are. I've been looking for you. Uh, the new volume. What, what are you doing? Yeah, I'll, I'll just go. Hey everyone, it's Ange. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. I bet there are at least two of you who are wondering, hey, where the heck did Ange go for so long? Well, the answer is, I was doing exactly what you just saw. <laughs> For the past few months, I have been locked into battle with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and trying to make my own personal site on the indie web and also just kind of procrastinating making another video. Oops. If you're around my age, you might have a memory of the early days of the internet before social media as we know it really took off. The days where people had personal blogs and made fun little websites about whatever they thought was cool. At the time, I was a bit too young to actively participate in making my own blog or website, but I always thought it was so cool that people had a whole corner of the internet all to themselves where they could post whatever they wanted and customize their page to their heart's content. I was really big into the sites where people would teach you telekinesis or like how to control fire. I was a kid, okay? <laughs> I've been so bored with social media lately. Facebook is just full of boomer posting and AI slop. Twitter is just insane garbage now. Instagram is just TikTok 2.0 and all of them want to steal your data and your time. About half a year ago, I got recommended this cool video by You've Got Cat about the indie web. I'd heard of NeoCities before, but I had no idea of the huge community of people who all dedicated themselves to making personal websites. I scrolled through a bunch of the top sites on NeoCities and decided that, hey, I kind of know HTML, I could probably do that too, and I started work on my page. It had been a while since I had learned HTML and CSS and a couple of years since I had actually used it, but since I recently dedicated myself to switch careers and go into web development, I thought it could be the perfect project to help me brush up on my skills. Uh, yeah. Making this website made me want to scream and go insane. Taking a year-long break from coding in HTML meant that I was not very good at it anymore, and I did not have the skills to make my site look as cool as some of the other ones that I'd seen. Basically, I had to look up every single HTML element, what they meant, and how to even do anything in CSS in the beginning. Heck, I even scrapped a whole first website I made because it wasn't what I wanted it to be. After that first website, I decided that I needed to make something a little simpler, something that more resembled the Angel Fire and GeoCities websites of the early 2000s that I remembered from my childhood. Shout out to the caver, okay? I also wanted it to be colorful and obnoxious and be cluttered with everything that I could find. I used this background archive tool to find some aesthetic appropriate backgrounds and a text gif maker to get some annoying sparkly text for my headers and titles. I started to hoard buttons and blinkies and stamps and gifs to put wherever I could on my site. I got a lot of inspiration from Petrapixel's site and used some of her iframe widgets too. She has a ton of coding resources and tutorials on her site, so if you're at all interested in making your own website, I recommend you go check her out. Time passed and I continued to work on my website, and the more I worked, the better I got at coding, enough to realize that my code was actually just a mess now. But that was a problem for future Ange to fix, right? But I didn't care, and I just pushed on. I made some custom shrines for things I enjoyed, made pages to yap about things I liked, and started to collect more and more digital garbage to decorate my site. But there was a new problem. The more I looked at my site, the more I started to hate it. 
At this point, I had finished almost every single page I wanted to make, but now it all looked like garbage to me. I had been scrolling through other people's websites for inspiration, and every single one I saw made my site look like a baby coated it. I especially love the sites I found that used an old CRT effect on them. They just looked so cool in comparison to my site. There were actually so many times during the process of making my site that I got so distracted just scrolling through and checking out other people's websites. There's some seriously cool stuff out there, and I highly recommend that you go and just get lost in the sea of people's custom sites after you finish this video, of course. But yeah, when I saw just how much other people could do with their sites, it really just made me want to start over again. But because of how far I had gotten, I knew I couldn't just scrap my whole site again, so my only course of action was JavaScript. See, I had an idea a while back to make a website where there was one theme that looked clean and professional, but then you hit a button and the theme changed to an old school Windows 98 desktop style. Past me was brilliant! That was exactly what I could do with my site. I could keep everything I had just made, but then switch the CSS file and boom, there would be another cool theme. Then came the next problem. I didn't remember how JavaScript worked at all. And thus began the process of relearning how to code in JavaScript just because I was tired of staring at my bright pink website all the time. I started to make a dark theme, learned how to do the CRT effect in CSS, which took forever to figure out. Shout out to Alec Loons and the tutorial on his website. And then I just had to figure out how to actually make the theme switch. The only way my small brain could figure out how to do it at the time was to basically just duplicate all of the content on every single page, put one set of content into a div with the class light theme and the other into a div with the class dark theme, then just have each CSS file toggle which div was shown and which CSS file was used. Safe to say, my code looked like an absolute freaking mess. But still, I was really happy that I was able to even get the theme switcher to work. At this point, there were only a few things I needed to do before the site was ready to go live, but I had this nagging thought in the back of my head. There had to be a way to fix my code so I didn't need to duplicate things every time I wanted to make a change to a page or write a blog post or something. I figured out a way to fix it and it was actually way easier than I thought. Instead of making two whole divs that would hide or show themselves with the theme, I could just put a class on the elements that were specific to each theme so only things like the headers would need to be duplicated. And then the CSS would just switch to the theme that I needed, right? The biggest problem was needing to fix this on every single page, but I was dedicated. I was so close to being finished, I just needed to push through. April 9th, 2025, themes switched, blog post written, shrines done. It was finally time to post my site. I was actually pretty nervous when I was making my account and uploading my code. I really didn't want to mess something up and need to remake the whole website. Honestly, at that point, if something went wrong, I don't know if I would have ever finished my site or posted it. But everything uploaded properly and all that was left was to set up a visitor counter, F2C clap, and the guest book. The visitor counter and clap was just a matter of copy pasting a line of code onto each page. I'll get back to this problem later. And I just needed to learn how to use an iframe to make the guestbook visible on the page. And with that, my website was finished and live for everyone to see. Or so I thought. Surprisingly, I actually left my site alone for all of a few weeks before my thoughts got the best of me and I needed to work on it again. <laughs> the first things I wanted to change were the sidebars. Remember when I said that I had to copy paste code of the visitor counter and clap on every page? Well, I was sick of needing to edit the sidebars and header and footer on every single page every single time I needed to change something. When I was learning web development, one of my favorite things to use was React components. I could go off on such a tangent about how much I love React, oh my gosh, but there was no way I was gonna do all of that to my simple website. Luckily, I found a way to make components with JavaScript, so I started on making components for everything on my site that I thought I would need to reuse. Header, footer, left and right sidebars. I probably even went a little overboard by making components for individual parts of the side sidebars like the Tamanachis and clap. After replacing all of that code on every page with my custom components, I was finally actually done, right? Well, a week later, I changed the entire light theme of my website. 
Okay, so I thought the original pink theme of my website didn't look good enough, and I really liked how organized the dark theme was and how everything lined up, so I basically completely redid my light theme to make it look like the dark theme, just with pink and lighter colors instead. <laughs> and it was at this point that I heard of a different website host called NecoWeb. Originally, I had posted my site to NeoCities because that was the only one that I knew about, and it was the most popular place to host your indie website. NecoWeb is a lot smaller and newer compared to NeoCities, so you're more likely to hear about it if you've kind of been in the indie web community a bit. Around this time, I also learned that NeoCities by default lets AI scrape the contents of people's websites, and I just really didn't like that idea at all. There were also a few things that NecoWeb did better than NeoCities, like being able to use outside scripts on your website, their supporter perks being cheaper and better, and it didn't let AI scrape their users' websites, which I love. All of these things combined convinced me to move my website over from NeoCities to NecoWeb. Even after all of this, I still wasn't done. I made my site kind of mobile responsive so that it was at least usable on a phone or tablet. I added a live chat widget, fixed the status widget, and got a new visitor counter. External scripts, yay! I joined some web rings, reworked my sidebars one last time so that they didn't reload every time you switch a page, and finally I made a whole new theme for my blog and completely reworked it again! <laughs> Remember when I was talking about the theme switcher and how I said that past me wanted to have a Windows 98 theme on a website? Well, that's exactly what I did for my blog. I used a cool thing called 98.css that makes it super easy to make everything look like old school Windows. At this point, I was also way more comfortable using JavaScript, so I was able to do some pretty neat th things with this section of my site. Stay tuned for the website tour to see the whole page. And now, finally, hopefully, my website is actually in a place where I don't want to change things every week. It's not perfect, and I'll be updating it regularly when I notice things I don't like or decide to clean up my code, but for now, I think I'm done with the huge changes. Welcome to my website! So this is the finished theme I ended up with on my website, and not to toot my own horn, but I think it looks pretty good, and I'm actually really proud of it. Even though it looks really simple, I, it took me so long to do it, and I put so much effort into it, but yeah, I'm really proud of how it came out, actually. Right here, this main section will scroll, and it has a bunch of just random quick facts about me, about why I wanted to do the website, the web rings I'm part of. So each section of my page will load right up in this middle part, and the sidebars don't have to refresh every time, which was something that annoyed me so much. If you look at the top of the right sidebar, you'll see my theme switcher button, which if you hover over, sometimes it kind of flashes like that, I don't know how to fix it, but if you hover over it, you can see a hint of the other theme, and when you click it, it takes you to the dark theme of my website. It's the exact same layout as the light theme, just with the stars in the background and a different header and different accent colors and stuff. Something I'm actually proud of that's like such a stupid thing on this page specifically, when you hover over the cameras they give you, a little green shine on the ones that you can actually click on and see the photos from and I just think that's so fun and the light theme it does it too but with the blue accent color I just think it looks so cool <laughs> but yeah every single page will just reload the center content like this and that's just for like this main section of my website and by that I mean everything except my blog page which we will get to in a minute but yeah, down the left side in the sidebar you can see the navigation, my status, which I use Status Cafe for, um, my time, which is like actually my own time where I live, um, the change log, something called Necolink, which it's like ads for other people's websites and you can click on whatever one and it'll take you to someone else's website and it's really cool for discovering other people. Um, then on the right side you can see my style switcher, the clap, which is just like a fun little interactive thing for people to do, um, some buttons, which I just love buttons so much. I love things that are colorful and blank and flash and whatever. Um, tamanachi, which are like little tamagotchi for your website and you can click on it and feed them. 
links to other places I am online, and then the live chat widget, which I think is really cool and a fun alternative to a guest book, even though I have both. <laughs> which, with the guest book, I know I said that I put it in an iframe, but I ended up changing that so it just goes to a completely different page because I think it looked kind of dumb just on its own in an iframe, and then when you switch to the dark theme, it was still like the light theme of the guest book, so I just made it link to a different page. I'm not going to show you every single page on my website because I really think you should go and check it out for yourself and scroll through my pages, but I really want to show you the blog part because that is the part I am most proud of. So let us go into the blog. And here it is. It looks like a Windows 98 desktop and all of this I coded in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, there's this cool thing I mentioned earlier called 98.css and it lets you put like classes on things to make them automatically like the divs will look like the windows and you can put the, the minimize and x buttons on there but this whole part I'm circling it with my mouse this whole part right here I coded all myself I styled it all myself this bottom bar I styled all myself and let me show you something really cool that I figured out how to do. Haha! <laughs> the, the windows actually minimize, isn't that so cool? And when you click, when you click these bottom ones, they come back. Isn't that cool? Okay, one more thing. And then, when you hit the X, they actually go away. I just, it's so stupid, but it's just so cool to me that I figured out how to do this. And then, you can click the icons and make them come back. The CD player widget down here actually plays music and I will be honest, I did not code this myself. This was actually a widget that somebody else made and they let you copy paste it, use it on your own website. Um, I have it linked in the resources page on my website if you wanna go check it out. But it actually does play music, so. Get copyrighted or anything for the music but I have 15 different songs on here that I picked myself and they're all video game music so you should really come and check it out <laughs> and this last thing here is another chat widget which I wanted to have a separate like I guess more comment section for my blog so people could talk about the stuff that I wrote on my blogs if they wanted to without like doing it right on the main site and the last cool thing I want to show you on this page is the start menu so to go back to home on here, you hit start and it brings up a little start menu. And then you can either shut down or log off and it will take you right back to the main page. So yeah, there is a quick tour of my website. I will put the link to my website in the description so you can go check it out on your own. Sign my guest book, write a comment in my chat. I will really appreciate it even if you just wanna like go and scroll around. Like, I really appreciate anyone who takes the time to look at this because I put a lot of effort into it and yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna send you on out to the outro of my video. I was actually pretty worried that this process of making my own website would burn me out from coding and make me rethink my decision to eventually switch careers into web development, but it actually did the opposite. I had taken a long break from doing any coding, but this little project rekindled my love for it and really solidified my decision to want to do this for my career. Heck, I even started to learn Python the past few weeks just because I was enjoying learning to code so much. I know that coding isn't for everyone and can be a difficult skill to pick up, but I hope I hope this video gave you a little inspiration to start your own site on the indie web. It's been so fun to learn to customize everything to my liking, and I've had way more fun in these few months that I've been working on my website than I ever did on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. In the age where AI art is starting to take everything over, it is more important than ever to continue to create things as a human. The things that you make don't need to be perfect. Make bad art, make cringy YouTube videos like this one, put everything out there for the world to see and embrace your own creativity. We're here to have fun, not to let the robots have all the fun for us. Thank you for making it to the end of my video. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more of the 100% human made cringy videos that I will inevitably put onto my channel. Bye bye.